Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 51st edition of the Tesla and SpaceX Redux. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day of the week of September 6th through September 12th in the history of Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, The Boring Company, and Elon Musk's other various business ventures. September 6, 2018. You would think, with all the furor it caused, that Argentina had invaded France, or the cure for cancer had been flushed down the toilet, or that the outcome of the World Cup was found to be rigged six months in advance. But none of those things had occurred on this date. Rather, it was that Elon Musk took a single puff of Joe Rogan's marijuana blunt on Rogan's podcast and video program. Investors were not amused as Tesla stock immediately dropped 6% on the news and remained under pressure for weeks. It didn't help that Musk was publicly feuding with Wall Street analysts, but that he tweeted that he was taking the company private, but then backtracked on the idea. There was a perception that Musk's well-known volatility was getting the better of him. SpaceX investors were also unamused as it was absolutely critical to the company that Musk maintain his top secret clearance with the US government something that was not possible with a pattern of drug use. The Air Force launched an investigation after Rogan's show, but fortunately the service branch quietly ended it after it was clear that Musk had shown a brief lapse of judgment rather than indulging in long-term behavior that would make his participation in the U.S. space program untenable. It didn't help that Tesla was struggling to start production of the Model 3 sedan and that SpaceX was behind schedule in the commercial crew program. Eventually, the pressure lifted from both companies as they finally delivered, and Musk's antics on Rogan's show gradually faded into the past. September 7th, 2014, the AsiaSat-6 craft was lifted to orbit on a Falcon 9 1.1 rocket, Booster 1011, from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 40 on this date no attempt was made to recover the booster. The launch was delayed for two weeks for additional verifications after a malfunction observed in the testing of the Grasshopper F9R Dev-1 prototype. The geosynchronous transfer orbit launch of the heavy payload did not allow for controlled splashdown, and Earth landings had not yet been developed for the Falcon 9. September 8, 2014. Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted a photo on this date of him delivering the first Model S sedans in Japan. The Wall Street Journal reported that one of the first nine Model S vehicles delivered to Japanese owners went to Yoshi Yamada, executive vice president of Panasonic, who was present at the handover ceremony. Mr. Yamada said the vehicle was for company use. Musk said at the event that, quote, an important point that I should emphasize about the Model S is that the batteries are all made in Japan. The heart of Model S is Japanese. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Panasonic actually manufactured 18650 and 2170 batteries at Tesla's Nevada Gigafactory, although it is likely some batteries are delivered from Panasonic's Japanese facilities as Tesla's battery production is capacity constrained. In 2021, Panasonic still is the leading battery supplier to Tesla, and has taken the lead on manufacturing Tesla's newly designed 4680 battery. September 9th, 2015. Bloomberg published a story in this date titled, quote, The Tiny Town That Hates Elon Musk. The article reported on the conditions that Boca Chica Village's residents were facing while SpaceX built a space launch complex and testing center only two miles away. The tiny unincorporated town, consisting of about 30 ranch-style homes, is actually called Copernic Shores and was an overly ambitious real estate development in 1967 that never succeeded in installing running water to the area and barely provided sufficient electricity. Nonetheless, about two dozen people moved into the town over the years, with about half that number in 2015 still calling Boca Chica Village home either permanently or seasonally. SpaceX chose the Boca Chica and Brownsville, Texas area as the location for their private space facility and received permission from the state and the FAA to conduct activities. The company attempted to buy out all 30 properties in Boca Chica, which was mostly successful. There are several holdouts who feel the $240,000 price offered for their properties 
worth just $30,000 in 2013, was inadequate to purchase similar beachfront property elsewhere. Then there are the zealous SpaceX security officers patrolling the roads in and around Boca Chica Village and restricting access during launch windows. Activities that has landed the company in hot water with the Cameron County District Attorney. So, given all the aforementioned friction, does Boca Chica Village hate Musk? We would say probably not. The remaining residents just want to share of the success story that SpaceX is promising everyone. Hopefully, they eventually get it. September 10th, 2015. Asia Broadcast Satellite's ABS-3A finally started operations on this date, about six months after SpaceX had launched the craft. The ABS-3A was lifted to orbit on a Falcon 9 1.1 rocket, Booster 1014, from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 40 on March 2nd. Since it was a GTO launch, no attempt had been made to recover the booster. Somewhat ironically, the launch had been contracted for by Boeing to launch both the ABS-3A and a satellite for Eutelsat, the Eutelsat 115 West B, to specifically take advantage of the lower cost SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle. It is thought that per satellite, launch costs were less than $30 million, a figure far lower than possible using a rocket from Boeing's ULA joint venture with Lockheed Martin. It was this reason that led SpaceX to eventually outstrip the ULA in the number of contracted flights per year and put the future of the federal contractor in some doubt. As of 2021, the bulk of the ULA's launch manifest is concentrated in classified missions for the U.S. government. September 11th, 2019, in what appears to be the first reference to the triple motor Model S, Elon Musk tweeted on this date that the only thing beyond ludicrous mode for the sports sedan was plaid. A number of Twitter followers asked questions and begged for clarifications, but Musk was silent thereafter. The plaid Model S was officially announced about one year later in September of 2020 during Tesla's Battery Day. The purpose of Battery Day was largely to announce the new 4680 cell replacement for the 18650 and 2170 cells. But near the end of that presentation, a video showing the Plaid taking a lap at the Laguna Seca racetrack was displayed. The first couple dozen Plaids were delivered during a staged ceremony in June of 2021. In addition to the triple electric drive motors producing 1,020 horsepower, the Plaid featured a new battery pack design, an improved heat pump, carbon overwrap rotors on the motors, and a new record for drag coefficient of 0.208. The car accelerates from 0 to 60 1.99 seconds, has a top speed of 200 miles per hour, can travel 390 miles in a single charge, and offers an improved charging speed that gives drivers 187 miles of range in just 15 minutes. We previously covered the Plaid in Milestones 24 and Milestones 104. September 12, 2016. The New York Post reported on this date a little humor from Elon Musk concerning the Amos 6 catastrophe on September 3rd. The satellite was a complete loss after the Falcon 9 detonated on the launch pad at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 40 during a pre-launch static test fire. The newspaper reported, quote, When the SpaceX rocket exploded on the launch pad, conspiracy theorists analyzed the footage and discovered a tiny black object quickly zipping by the frame. When questioned about it, Elon Musk added fuel to the fire by saying the company hasn't ruled out UFO involvement in its investigation. SpaceX was initially mystified as to the cause of the explosion, and it wasn't until February of 2017 that the cause was fully explained. We previously covered the Amos 6 in Milestones 99 and Milestones 124. Before we get to the current event of the week, we wanted to see if you enjoyed this 51st episode of Bladed Tech's Tesla and SpaceX Redux. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity to subscribe, 
please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. On August 19th, 2021, NASA reluctantly issued its second stop work order on the human landing system contract it had awarded to SpaceX. This day is effective from August 19th through November 1st to allow time for a suit filed by Blue Origin in a court of federal claims to be considered. Initial arguments are expected on October 14th. The General Accountability Office had already dismissed Blue Origin's claims as largely meritless other than for a couple technicalities, but it is clear that Jeff Bezos is willing to spend a significant amount of money to keep Blue Origin in the game. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson raised the possibility that Blue Origin's suit will significantly delay the Artemis program if the court requires extensive discovery in the case. Probable delays have already arisen due to problems with the SLS launch system, the Orion crew capsule, and even the Zemu lunar spacesuit. It isn't clear what, if any, impact the HLS court case will have on SpaceX's Starship development and their launch manifest that includes a manned lunar circumnavigation in 2023 and an unmanned landing in 2024. We'll keep you posted. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and innovation documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.